Welcome to Event Speak with me, Big John, CEO of Beyond Experiential. A special evening edition of Event Speak as we go international tonight. Um, if you're just tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for coming by. And if you're tuning back in, thank you for coming back. Um, as you know, or now you're finding out, we are an interview show. We talk with people from across every part of the spectrum of the event business. And uh, tonight's um, guest is no exception. And he comes all the way from Beijing, China. He has a very impressive resume. Over 17 years in the experiential marketing business. Um, he's worked with some of the biggest brands in the world from Intel, Coca-Cola, Ford. Um, the list goes on. Um, he is now a partner in Brain Trust, which is a boutique agency that he's part of, uh, as he joins us now from Beijing. Bruce, welcome to Event Speak. Thank you for coming on the show. Hello, Big John. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are things right now in Beijing? Tell me. Uh, actually, you know, the past from May 1st to May uh, 6th is the national holiday. Uh, after that, almost, you know, we are uh, the, the, the level already uh, down to the level two. So almost uh, a lot of things back to normal, like, the, you know, the scenic uh, area are already reopened, the restaurant almost back to normal. Uh, but definitely they, they need to, to, to wear the, the mask. But at you, uh, for your information, in the past uh, uh, national holiday, uh, I got some uh, email from the, 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 the government, like uh, uh, the revenue of the scenic area almost uh, reached 70% of the last period. So almost uh, back to normal, yeah. Wow, that's, that's encouraging for us here in the United States as, you know, we're we're a chunk of months uh, kind of behind you guys and how all of this has played out with uh, COVID-19 um, and, and of course how it's affecting not only our, our business, but our, our daily lives. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, Bruce, uh, your experience, what you've done in the event industry um, and where it's taken you. Uh, I'm over 70 years, uh, Ivan Vatra. Uh, with wide ranging experience in the general management of different kinds of pro uh, projects. Uh, I have uh, operation some large scale events and uh, unique events in China. Like what you, you said, I, I work with some big brand. Uh, like the, we, we, we run the F1 uh, Beijing city events, or the first ever run of uh, an F1 car on Beijing street. Wow. Also, I run, uh, yeah, yeah, I run okay. the, the NFL uh, uh, flag football tournaments. It's uh, around two months, uh, uh, five divisions, uh, 300 matches, uh, over 15, uh, uh, over 150 uh, teams. Uh, I also uh, run some long uh, turn showcasing event for Coca Cola at Beijing Olympic Games and uh, also at uh, 2008 World Expo. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's amazing. You got to be part of the Beijing Olympics um, yeah, yeah. with, with Coca-Cola nonetheless. Um, yeah. I think a few people have heard of them. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so would you say that's the biggest um, thing you've ever managed? Would that, uh, would I will say, say that the, uh, the World Expo one will the biggest um, I ever managed. Uh, you know, I'm uh, we we creative and uh, build uh, uh, 800 square meters pavilion at a World Expo in Shanghai 2008, uh, 2010. Uh, we uh, we creative uh, six green uh, zones and with uh, two extra uh, space for VIP and uh, PR hospitality. Uh, it's running it over six months. Uh, Manager over 500 staff. Uh, receive nearly two million visitors during the operation period. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Five hundred <laughs> staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we nearly, uh, you, you know, we, we took nearly uh, fifty thousand visitors in peak day. Wow, that's incredible, man. Like, uh, yeah. I, I would lose more hair if I had any to lose. That sounds very stressful. <laughs> um, so, 
Okay. Um, what would you say you think your best event was, or maybe even your favorite event that you've got to work? Yeah, I think the best and uh, my favorite will be, I'll be say the the Coca Cola Pavilion at uh, Beijing Olympic Olympic Games. We also run this uh, project over uh, 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 managed this project near two years. Actually, it's the first time that they have this scale was showcasing in Olympic history. Uh, we created a building uh, is uh, over uh, uh, four thousand square meters. It's much bigger. Uh, uh, in uh, this will be located in the core area of the Olympic Green. This building have seven uh, experience zones, three VIP zones, and one PR zones. We running it over uh, one month. Our showcasing is the biggest one in the 15 sponsor showcases. It should be the biggest one in the whole Olympic showcasing history, I think. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, daily we receive nearly uh, uh, 10,000 uh, visitors, including IOC present, uh, uh, IPC present, uh, sports stars, and uh, uh, Olympic champions, or definitely including some the normal visitors. Wow, that's that for that's, me is very incredible. That's incredible. No, that that's that for me is incredible. Um, <laughs> now you know the obvious thing here is we're we're all living in a in a COVID nineteen world um, that spans everywhere. Um, here you are on the other side of the world, and we're having this uh, this same conversation. Um, as we we talked a little bit about off camera before we started um, that. It's, it's getting close to back to normal now um, in Beijing, which is very encouraging for us here in the United States. As you know, we're, we're a chunk of months behind you guys as far as the, you know, the COVID is concerned. Um, would you say that it had a big impact on the event industry uh, in China? Uh, uh, at this moment, uh, it's hard to say how to impact uh, the, this industry in China. You know, uh, this industry in China is, is highly competitive industry, especially in the past 20 years. This industry um, grew up so fast with some national uh, brands uh, grew up, like the, we call BAT, B-A-T, Baidu, uh, uh, Alibaba, Tencent. You know, at this past uh, uh, 20 years, more and more new agency creative than the founders and the join this fight. You know, uh, uh, during this, uh, this disaster, uh, uh, as I know, some um, uh, events have been turned their model from the below the line to the online mode, like some, I know, like some uh, uh, car uh, dealers meeting, they translate to the online meeting. It saves a lot of money, actually. You know, normally, uh, if you run this scale meeting around the, uh, uh, around 1,000 uh, uh, attendees, normally you will be charged and cost uh, around uh, several million RMB. Yeah. But if you turn it online, it's only cost uh, maybe only uh, uh, several 10,000. It saves a lot of money. But you know, in China, it, it, this, this brand is uh, the local uh, companies still uh, 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 in their teenage. They still want, still want some. Uh, make some big noise for their brand, but so they are still focused on them uh, below the event. So I don't think you have some uh, fundamental transmit uh, after this disease. Interesting, interesting. So just to make sure I understand, so what you're saying essentially is um, the the government uh, that puts a, a high priority on um, this type of business, uh, marketing experience, marketing, therefore has, has pushed a lot of it through, but has translated it not unlike what we've been doing, where there's a bigger push on the digital side of things or taking mm -hmm. things virtually. Mm -hmm. And as you were just explaining, um, there's, there's some silver linings, so to speak, meaning benefits to doing that is in, you're saving a lot of money. You're able to reach a lot mm -hmm. of people because mm -hmm. as we're, we're looking at each other here through this camera, you know, you could reach, Mm -hmm. huge amount of people mm -hmm. um that's that's very interesting to me um so you know we have 
many producers at event speak uh, that have clients interested you know in activating in other countries uh, probably one of the the top things I hear from people is like you know how do we do what we do here in the United States in other countries uh, do you have any advice um, as to how to activate a great event in China um, and what any challenges or uh, learning lessons that you can share uh... I will strongly suggest that these guys uh, uh, will to find some more qualified local uh, partner work together. Uh, you know, China is a huge, uh, very diverse uh, country, the culture very different with other countries. Uh, I was uh, suppose that uh, uh, these uh, these guys never run any project in China, so they will find some more local partner. Uh, if I can say some challenge, I will say the uh, the first challenge I will mention that will be the big challenge that uh, get the event permit from the government, mm. even for the local experienced agency. You know, uh, uh, this uh, uh, the minimum time to continue would be a month. However, it may be user identified. You know, and this will be the, the big challenge. Another one, I obviously say, um, I think these guys should be have a strong sense of local uh, culture and the local government schedule. You know, not only the, the national and the local holidays, but also the government uh, events. Uh, it, it's a potential issue. Uh, the serious risk can trigger to your event be shut down. It's very wow. important actually, yeah. I could only imagine that uh, in specific to trying to say for an example, um, an American agency or brand wanting to activate in China, there, there has to be an extraordinary amount of what we call uh, red tape. Uh, you mentioned permits going through due process. Um, you know, it's interesting to me because it's part of what I love about the event industry and why I'm very passionate about uh, what we collectively do uh, for a living, Bruce, is although it's different, it's the same all over the world. Like here, here you are in, in China, and we've talked with friends from Barcelona to friends in Moscow, um, and it's really kind of it's it's different, but it's the same. That yeah. you know, there's there's this proven, let's call it a a style of marketing that works so that brands are able to come to life and involve their consumers in an experience. And you know, that's essentially what all of us do here. So here is my next question for you. Um, as you now look forward to uh, moving past COVID-19, as you mentioned, you guys are getting close to back to normal there. Um, will you, are you already seeing events starting to come back to move away from the digital side of it to get back to traditional events? Or are we still seeing more, as you said, uh, events that are kind of behind the camera, if you will? Uh, you know, as um, I know that, uh, you know, the digital path in China was uh, developed very well, especially in the past 10 years. Almost uh, most of the ones uh, uh, beyond the other countries' imagination, I think. So we have a, a strong technical uh, uh, reserve so during this period, I mean, during the, uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 period, oh, it's obvious that some of the online events will be requested to grow up. But that will be rely on the exactly, uh, rely on the, 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 the techno we, ha we already have. So you know, in, pa in past decade, uh, the, the digital part and the, the online part will be almost uh, the essential part in some events in past decade, I think. So it's not a big change in China, I think. So wow. Another part, yeah, 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 yeah. I find yeah, that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fascinated by that. Um, so what you're, what you're saying in short is that um, despite everything that's been going on, where you guys have really, um, China has made a lot of advances in technology uh, even ahead of, of many other countries, um, mm -hmm. including us for that matter, uh, you, <laughs> got, you guys have been able to incorporate that into your 
brand marketing. So therefore, it hasn't really affected you guys so much. So it's kind of, uh, how shall I say, business as usual uh, for what you're doing in China is what it sounds like to me. Would you say that's accurate? Uh, uh, so for this part, that's, uh, I think we should be back to neuro around uh, maybe June or July. Back to normal, huh. I think. As I know, some uh, business, uh, I mean, agency already back to uh, to be, do some business trip for 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 venue check something for the bread uh, prepare for the uh, next event maybe in the two months. Uh, so almost back to normal. As as I know, that uh, uh, the employee already back to the office, uh, back to normal after maybe by the April. At the end of April, almost back to normal, but uh, the, but definitely they need to wearing the mask. So another uh, information I can share that uh, as I know after the Chinese New Year around the February, uh, the some uh, some exhibition already announced they are be postponed from May to July. So some related events, especially the below uh, uh, BTL part, will be follow the new schedule. Uh, so I uh, ideally, I think that the least industry are back to normal by July or uh, June or July, I think. Wow, okay. so you're right around the corner. Um, are you right now uh, working from home? Or are you back in the office now? Uh, sometimes I'm back to office, sometimes I'm still at home. So it depends on uh, what I need. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right. Um, Bruce, I, I can't even tell you how much I, I've enjoyed talking with you. And um, honestly, that's what I think the most amazing thing about what we're trying to do with Event Speak is right now, is we want to connect the all-inclusive event community. People do events all over the world. And we want Event Speak to be the place that they come to find a common voice, to be able to... Um, create dialogue and, and find solutions together. Uh, not just in, you know, uh, obviously what's going on with the pandemic, <laughs> to understate that, but as we move past that, and as uh, we all have the opportunity to work together and, um, and help our clients and, our, and their brands and, and the agencies that we work with really come up with groundbreaking ideas and create experiences that are lasting and really impact people. Um, I really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining me today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can find Bruce on EventSpeak. Uh, Bruce, is there a website or anything for uh, Brain Trust that you want to mention? Uh, maybe, maybe surprise good. Surprise good. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, you can find Bruce, of course, on Event Speak, and Event Speak is at www.eventspeak.com. But you know that because you're watching right now. I am Big John, CEO of Beyond Experiential. Uh, we have a bunch of great episodes coming up, just like Bruce. Very interesting guests, people that come from us all over the world in very different parts of the event. Uh, ecosystem, uh, which is still one of my favorite terms that JT came up with. So uh, join us again here on Event Speak. This is me, Big John, signing off for tonight. Please, as always, take care of yourselves and each other. Mm -hmm.